Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at the types of sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks, remember, are from sediments, which are little pieces of other rocks that have worn away over time. Uh, and once those rocks are in a stream, they can be deposited in a pile or fall to the bottom of a mountain and be in a pile. And then once they're compressed, they can be cemented, usually by some kind of water with minerals in it that acts like a cement. So the different types of these rocks usually have to do with how big the particles are or what type of particles they were. So if they're little pieces or if it was dissolved in water, all those difference, or if they're larger or, or middle or smaller pieces. So let's look at the example. Uh, down or uh, categorized into the types of materials that make up those rocks. And a lot of that has to do with size. So do large particles make up that rock or small particles make up that rock or particles that were so small that they actually had been dissolved in water that then as it settles out or comes out as crystals uh, that you can end up with a new type of rock. So this is the basis of the, of the classification. So the first term that you need to know is the idea of clastic. And clastic has to do not like plastic or elastic, but, but the idea of something broken apart. So a clastic uh, is anything that used to be a rock. So something that was broken from another piece of rock. So it's the most common type of sedimentary rock. And so we're now gonna look at all these clastic rocks, which are particles that then have been glued together, uh, lithified together, um, a lot of these are based upon the size of these particles. So the first one would be coarse-grained rocks. So these are large particles, so gravel-sized. So the two types of these large ones is whether the material has been in a river or not in a river. Okay, so a conglomerate are usually river stones. So remember, river stones are rounded because the river has knocked off these materials, not knocked off the edges of these rocks as they're on the bottom of the stream, as they're being knocked along onto other rocks. It essentially acts like a big rock tumbler. So a conglomerate are large pieces, certainly large enough to see, that are rounded, okay? Breccia is also large pieces that have been glued together but breccias normally have not been in a river. So these were on a rock pile somewhere, broken off the side of a mountain, for instance, and then settling to the bottom, uh, either blown by the wind and put into a deposit or simply deposited at the bottom of a hill that has never been bumped around. And so you still have jagged edges. So breccias and conglomerates are these large grained rocks. Medium grained rocks usually is sand, okay? So sandstone, that's a mid middle-sized rock. You can still feel it with your finger, but if you were to look at a piece of sandstone, you couldn't necessarily, unless you looked really, really closely, see one particle from another because you know what the size of sand is. So let's look at the idea of porosity. If something is porous, there's open spaces. Imagine a, a sponge being porous, okay? It has pores in it, little, little holes, little dips. So spaces in between rocks that then can fill up with material that can glue it together. Remember the, the cement that cements these, these particles together normally is some kind of a mineral that's dissolved in water. And now this pile of sand, for instance, gets wet. And with that water comes minerals that when the water then is evaporated away can leave these minerals and then the minerals act as a cement that glues the particles together. Some particles are very, very highly cemented and others not. There are some rocks that you could break apart with your thumb, others that are completely hard. Okay, so it really just depends. The last one is fine-grained rocks and fine-grained rocks usually is something smaller than sand. So clay size, okay, clay is the squishy mud that you would have on the bottom of a pond or silt. Silt is that almost dust that is wet on the bottom of a, of a river or pond. Um, when those come together, you end up with mudstone or siltstone. Now, sedimentary rocks 
can be in layers because a sediment is all one type of material that is formed together into a stone. Then once it's a stone, other material can be put on top of it. So instead of like an entire mountain fusing as one mountain, many times sedimentary rocks will f form layers. Now any time that you've looked on the side of the highway, since we live in the mountains, the side of the highway, you're going to obviously see uh, cuttings where you're going to have layers and layers and layers of rock, one on top of another. You might have a clay stone or a silt stone or a mud stone or a sandstone, one on top of another um, in some kind of a formation. Now, rocks that were not um, clastic were not in little pieces were dissolved. So it is very possible that you were to have, for instance, a uh, minerals dissolved in water, okay, either by some kind of acid uh, or something like that, where there's, there's materials uh, dissolved in the water, like you would have salt dissolved in water, where you have salt water. You have some kind of minerals dissolved in that water, and then somehow the water goes away. So in this case, as an example of evaporates, where you've got material with lots and lots of, in this case, salt, high salinity, high salt content, and then the water evaporated, leaving the salt. You can have layers and layers of salt. Um, we have, in our area, lots of salt. In fact, um, in the revolutionary times, this is what made this area. Uh, this is why people came here, because there was lots of salt here, and they could mine it and sell it. It was the first mining here, was salt mining. So that's called an evaporate. The other type that's extremely common is limestone. And limestone is a, is a calcium carbonate dissolved material that came from seashells. So let's imagine on the bottom of an ocean where you have lots and lots and lots of shells that is in the bottom with the sand. Okay, so you could have limestone embedded in with, with sand. You could have whole layers of just uh, calcium carbonate that then squishes together. So this was dissolved in the seawater, but then kind of filtered out and fell to the bottom and then had layers and layers and layers in this material, then compacted into limestone, okay? So uh, you can have uh, limestone that then is, is converted into marble, say, metamorphically. We'll look at metamorphic rocks later. But this is another one that's very, very common all over the country.